specially trained soldiers from one of Canada's greatest regiments, the Black Watch. My body does not carry normal blood. It's Black Watch blood. Surviving impossible odds. We had the highest casualty list of any battalion. We were the battalion's top snipers. There's less than 50 of us left, but there are four snipers. Funny thing. Always the first ones in. A sniper goes out to create mayhem. Nothing! Until they fired on you, you had to keep going. If you cannot shoot accurately, you are gone. You only got one shot. We put everything on the line to save the world from the Nazis. A lot of times you're scared like hell. It's something that has to be done. Ah! Tim and Russ. Only one thing kept us going. Jimmy. We looked after each other. That's how we survived. My name is Corporal Dale Sharp. And this is our story. It was the summer of 44, a month after D-Day. The Nazis had taken over Europe, and they weren't giving it back as easy as we'd hoped. No sooner had the Black Watch landed, and we were sent in 20 miles to knock the Germans off of Verrier Ridge. But they were waiting for us with everything they had. I don't know how I escaped with my life. I should have been dead. I'll never forget that. Never forget that. Anybody tells you that they know what's going on, they don't. They're not telling the truth. What I'm telling you is the truth. You don't know what's going on. Guys could be getting killed 30 feet away. You don't see them. You don't care about them. You're talking nothing about yourself. I could hear the guns firing. I the shells, the bullets flying by. They're just dropping like flies in the grass. It was bad. All the companies are gone. Hundreds and hundreds of them just gone. There's only 20 or something of us left. Our first big battle, 300 killed, wounded or taken prisoner. The worst day ever for the watch. It took another two weeks, almost a thousand more allies wiped out before we finally kicked the Jerry's off that bloody ridge. That's when I got out of that C company and went into scope platoon. Platoon commanders asked me to ask for volunteers for the scout platoon. A sergeant came along and said, I might as well tell you the truth. It's, it's dangerous. A scout is a guy that goes ahead, checks where the enemy is, and fights for them if he has to. The advantage is you won't have to do sentry duty. Right away, that was a 20 plus for me. I hated that. You had to fight all day and then guard duty all night. I'll join. The Jerry's were on the move, and it was the Canadian Army's job to chase them. The Black Watch marched on foot north through France. Jimmy Bennett was just 21, a farm kid from the prairies. He didn't know it yet, but us scouts, we weren't like the regular foot soldiers he fought with before. We didn't have to wear helmets or hull gear. We were snipers and lookouts. We didn't fight on the front lines. We fought in front of it. Hey, Jimmy! Did you join the scout platoon? Yeah! You're nuts. 
They couldn't understand why I was stupid enough to go in the scope with them. That's why they didn't want my job. No one didn't offer to take my place. Jimmy was put under my charge. He's seen his share of war on Verrier Ridge, but never the way he was going to see it with us. I don't know what they told you, but uh, this isn't like the rifle company. You're actually going to have to look at your target through a scope. You're going to get a little used to them being alive before you pull the trigger. Training him was the job of our 21-year-old corporal from Montreal, Jim Wilkinson. Hands down the best shot in my platoon. We just called him Hook. Always Hook. That was due to the, the size of my nose, and most people never knew me by my first name. I hate to boast, but I was one of the best shots in the regiment. Then there was Mike Brunner, 21, also from Montreal. Except Mike was born in Hungary, the only one of us that could speak German. I was a good soldier because I did uh, exactly what they wanted me to And I listened. I was good at listening. Considering who we were up against, understanding the German came in real handy, especially the scout patrols. Me, I was 26, the old man on the team. At least that's how the boys saw me. He was a big fella, wide as a bull, and as strong as a bull. Dale Sharp was the type of a guy uh, you'd want to follow anywhere. Home for me was Corbyville, Ontario, where I drove a truck for the local distillery. I had two kids, my girl Dale Jr. and little Teddy. And a third on the way with the light of my life, Zelma June. Plenty of reasons to stay home. But this job had to be done for my family and everyone else. By the end of August, we caught up with the Jerrys. We knew that each French town we came to was probably crawling with the sons of bitches. The trick was finding them and flushing them out so our troops could mow them down. That's what our scout platoon was for. We had to walk into each village, and until they fired on you, you had to keep going till somebody shot at you. If he missed you, fine. If he didn't, you were a dead duck. That's the kind of business I was in. You just become numb, immune. It's something that has to be done. Some people can't take that kind of stuff. I don't know, I just put that out of my mind and went and did what I was supposed to do. We clawed our way up the Channel Coast of France and into Belgium to the port of Antwerp, the biggest in Western Europe, for a big showdown. The Allies had already captured the port, but the Jerry's controlled the Scheldt, meaning none of our ships could get through from the North Sea. Without food, weapons, and ammo coming in for our boys, we were sunk. Headquarters was set up just outside of Antwerp. Our scout platoon was called Boys, into HQ. Up here on the map, you see the shell. They wanted us to zero in on where the Jerry's had set up. This is what controls the entrance to Antwerp. We get as much information as we can and pass it on to the headquarters, and headquarters the applies the information to their attack. They couldn't ask the rookies to do it, so the job fell to me and Hook. Our orders were to sneak behind enemy lines across the Albert Canal. Joe Nixon, who was my commander at the time, said, he said, Hook, we have a dinghy right, here man. for you and Dale. But once you're there, I'll have to pull the boat back. We can't risk the Germans getting the boat. So you'll have to make your own way back. Understood, sir. We get to this small cluster of trees. There's a German standing guard duty. I said, Dale, we gotta take this son of a gun out. 
I can jump them, and you, you stab them. And that's when it all went south. There's a whole platoon of Germans in there having supper. As he was being stabbed, he screamed. Said to Dale, you better start taking off your boots and a few other pieces of clothing, because we got to swim across this Lincoln Albert Canal. Elf Dan! Jesus, they all both of them! Get in! Get in! Now we were just trying to get out alive. We got to the embankment, and lo and behold, the dinghy was still there. The rope they used was too short to pull it back. Good Lord is looking after us. The next couple of nights with more scouting, we started to get a pretty good picture of where the Jerry's were set up along the shelter. They were everywhere. Our scout platoon needed to beef up. The brass brought in reinforcements, Watch. but not enough. Help! Advanced death park. Most were just kids who couldn't reload a damn weapon. Or dark art. Never mind shoot one. That's when and Sandy, Russell Sanderson, came into the picture. You think you're, at that age, you're indestructible and you can solve the problem by going and helping. And that's what I wanted to do. I'm in, sir. Sandy was 18 from Niagara Falls. He'd been trying to enlist since the war first broke out. I had a paper that said I was 18, and I was not 18, yet I had my brother's paper. I got caught at a recruiting tent twice. <laughs> Sandy struck me as a cowboy type. Go here, go there, let's go. He was uh, willing to win the war himself. This is Corporal Sharp. Sergeant so called me over and said, whatever Dale tells you to do, you do it. My job was to take these kids, Jimmy Bennett, Sandy Sanderson, and the others, and turn them into killing machines. And if they listened, they might just make it home. I was so taken by working with the man. Take your helmet off. Stay with me. He was so sincere about teaching and his honor about things. I'm alive today because of what Dale taught me. What I knew about shooting, I learned back home, teaching my kid brother Billy. My brother Dale, he was nine years older than I was. And uh, he was on a pedestal as far as I was concerned. He was an excellent sportsman shooter. He was my idol. All right, straight ahead, reference, gray building, Window on the left, third story up. A sniper learns real quick that the best Nazi target is the one with the highest rank. You cut the head off the snake, and the rest of the division goes blind. I used to train sometimes in a, in a German uniform. Infantrymen, they got a white band on them. If they're artillery, they got a red band. What do you see? See a German. What's he wearing? What's his uniform? Infantry. What rank is he? Junior officer. Not bad. We didn't want any bozo out of the rifle companies. He has to be a disciplined man like myself. All right, so use a sling as a brace. So put your arm through there. It. But spotting a jerry is only half the job. Deep in the shoulder. See that bottle right there? 
If you cannot shoot accurately, you are gone. Your focus is on your breathing. You only got one shot. Deep breath in. I was good with a rifle, yes. Half out. I had a telescope on it. Squeeze that trigger. You could pretty well hit a guy at 300 yards in the head in no trouble at all. How'd I do, Huck? See so you do it again. All the training in the world can only take you so far. Where are we going, Dale? Find out when we get there. Stay quiet. He takes me over to a place way out, away from our guys, laying down it along the river. All right, Sanderson, take your helmet off. Take up your sight picture. My 12 o'clock, look for the broken tree. We weren't here to shoot bottles or paper targets. And there's Jerry's on the other side of the river. Take up your sight picture, Sanderson. Look through the sight, Sanderson. You don't know how a guy is going to react till you try him. All right, don't worry about the other guy. Just worry about the one. It's going to be him or you. Breathe slow. Your hand tightens up like a paralysis and your fingers move so slowly and squeeze that trigger. It's just like you're squeezing an orange, nice and slow. And you see that poor beggar go down, and you know, there's my first one. It's sad to say that, that, that we have to become used to this sort of thing, but it's a necessity. Stop counting now. Stop after one. It's a damn war and we didn't start it and it had to be ended. So you do the job. Sanderson, we're leaving. Okay. Glad to have you, Sandy. We had our team, the closest thing we'd ever have here to a family. Let's go. We were sent out to the town of Wimbledon, just over a mile from the front. The Jerry's had just been chased out. For four years, the people here had been beaten down, nearly starved to death. But now, they were finally free. That's when we came across something we thought we'd never see in this whole hellhole of a war. Ice cream. Who are you there? Who are you there? Are you anxious? Ah, yeah, yeah. I got, well, the guy who ran the place hadn't seen milk now. in three years. Uh, my main vow, so we'll then somewhere, he found this farmer so, and his yeah. cow. Uh, now he was bro, getting milk so smuggled. Milk and something. So yeah, we have Asia. Food was a factor because the Germans uh, were confiscating everything, so they had to scrounge. Dus ik was this jaar, dus dat is 71 jaar geleden. Wij sliepen hier allemaal in de kelder. Dat was voor die V1's en die V2's. De V1. Die oorden aankomen, dat was gelijk een vliegtuig, maar een speciaal soort geratel zo. Veel van die jongens die kwamen bij ons en die vroegen ice cream with soda. Ja, wij kenden dat niet natuurlijk. Het Canadese drankje, zeggen ze zo tegen hier bij ons. Hè. Right, fellas. Black watch. 
Black Watch. Black Watch. Black Watch. <sighs> Little kids would come along and they were starving to death. It was terrible. They just kept getting skinnier and thinner and thinner. And there was nothing you could do. When the Jerry's pulled out of this place, they robbed these poor people blind. Took everything. It reminded us why we were here. To crush Hitler. Get the world back on track. For these kids and mine. <laughs> Dan werd er ook een liedje gezongen. Ik ken daar nog een paar regeltjes van buiten. You put your left hand in, your left hand out, your left hand in, and you check the only boat. You do the okie and you turn around. That's what you're about. We liberated part of France and Belgium. Now we were headed to Holland. It was time to kick the Jerry's out of the Scheldt and open up the port. We were going to be fighting on land flat as a board, flooded to high hell. Getting in and out alive was going to be tough. Our scout patrols became more important than ever and more dangerous. We were to go out and bring in all the information, trucks, vehicles, weapons, whatever you saw. We work in the dark, mostly, in the dark. We had different clothes. We wore a different jacket, camouflage green. You just keep your fingers crossed and hope you get out of it. You, you don't expect to live uh, very long. You boys all clear the plan? Clear. clear. All right, good to go. Lads, out of the truck! We're on what's called a listening patrol. Get as close to the enemy and be in a, in a hidden position. And you just never know from one minute to the next what's going to happen. Going out on a listening patrol was absolutely miserable. You don't know whether you're walking into a, an inferno of guns. The goal is finding their HQ. That's where we dig up our best information. Getting there was another thing, pure suicide. Listen at the windows for the number of voices, any mention of, of weapons or, or, or places. We have a major and a first officer. I really didn't hear much. He's a... Uh... He's leaving, yeah. Out the back. Go. We walk along the road very quietly and we'll see if we can hear them and then we'll sneak up on them and get a prisoner. Betty, this is a good spot. Go get Brenner. Go. You always had a couple of grenades hooked in your belt. You get close enough to him and you'll say, halt, and he halts, or he, he lays on the ground dead. You don't just ask him to come, he won't come. You may not come to come if you just run up and ask him. You have to take him. Take him back and they'll interrogate him. England and the swine hunt. Halfway through October, we were working around the clock sniping and running patrols, gearing up for the big battle at the Scheldt. We were dead tired, 
the only thing that kept us going was each other. You develop such close friendships. Okay, let's go. You run into the same perils and dangers and mishaps. Okay, hey, Jimmy, hold here. I'm a nervous person, but Michael Bruner used to always try and get me to slow down. Take a deep breath. Because he was a cool fellow. You're going out and you're, a lot of times you're scared like hell. Go, you're in the best position. We're clear. Even with just one bad situation, you become attached to each other, and uh, that was the case with uh, Jim Bennett and I. He's the best guy in the world. But here's the thing about war. Even going back into your own lines, you're never really safe. Hook and I were coming back, and we had to come through the Maisonneuve lines. The Maisonneuve were one of us, a French-speaking regiment from Montreal. But we still needed to use a password to clear the security checkpoint. Hey, halt! Whoa, don't shoot! The password changed every night. The password that night was steamer trunk. Steamer? Oh. Um, bag, uh... The guy says, steamer. And you have to holler trunk. If you don't holler trunk, you can get shot right there. Steamer? It's, um... Whoa. Luggage, baggage. We couldn't think of the damn word trunk. Jesus, Without a password, what is it? What's a password? We were I don't know, Hook. Uh, Black we're Black Watch. Watch. We're Black we're Watch. Black Watch, you kidding me, boy, huh? Show no. me the feather, boy. And you always carried your Belmoral inside your sniper's jacket. It's your recognition, and there's no one else has it, eh? Feather. Come closer. There's a feather, boy. See, Maisie? That, that's our feather. <laughs> Black watch. <laughs> Black watchers, old song Black watch. The password is trunk, huh? <laughs> you can go past. You can go past. <laughs> I thought you were going to shoot us. But if we knew what was waiting for us around the corner, none of us would have been laughing. Black Friday was about to come crashing down. The Jerry's were set up just outside the Dutch town of Woonstrecht. They were on an embankment around half a mile away from our position, over open ground. It was like a funnel. There was high ground on one side, uh, high ground on the other side. The Black Watch were sent in to fight, but this time the scout platoon had to go too. Reinforcements were still too green, so it was all hands on deck. They were just former artillerymen, drivers, cooks, everything. We, we taught them to use a gun. We taught them to keep their head down too. But that wasn't the worst of it. Moving through the water and muck was slow, and it threw off the timing. The whole countryside was flooded because the, the Germans had uh, bombed and opened up the uh, dikes. Once we finally got there, we waited for what seemed like forever. It was supposed to go in at 5.30 in the morning. And when it come time to move in and across that bloody great open field, it was 6.30 and it was crack of dawn. It was first light. This is the big difference between last dark and first light. And you can see everything that moves eh? We went out there and it was murder. <laughs> We were up against German paratroopers. We could fight like all hell. Every time we'd move, we'd get a mortar or a rifle fire. 
We were caught. And I know you have some. Gangs were dropping all over the place. Just like, am I dreaming or is this the truth? How am I going to get out of this mess? It was a black day for the Black Watch again. Because of our mortar platoon who filled the field with smoke, all five of us made it through. But most weren't so lucky. Dozens dying all around us. Nothing we could do. It hurt. It hurt when you, you can't help somebody. And you know bloody well that his, his escape route just cut off. The second worst day we, we ever experienced, that we lost a hundred men in there. Now we were mad as hell. We turned it up a notch or two. Whenever the Germans wanted to fight, we fought them. We just kept pushing them harder and harder. We ramped up our sniper patrols. Our boys fought hard. We took back the Scheldt. One flooded field, one tiny town at a time. It was a, a sense you, you could almost taste it. Hitler's luck was finally running out. With each Dutch town we freed, we rounded up prisoners and snagged souvenirs for good measure. As we went through, uh, I found the swastika. <laughs> it, was a, it was a little trophy of the war, a little souvenir. Having fun yet? And you just stood a little taller. Make it a little show of it, too. After what we'd been through, you couldn't blame us for wanting to rub their faces in it. One way or another, the war had to end. It's just too bad that only one of us would be there to see it. We moved northwest to the Dutch town of Goos. We needed to know if it was safe to bring in the battalion. Were there any cherries still crawling around somewhere? That's when we sent in Hook. I was the first Allied soldier to, in Ghost. I was on patrol, a one-man patrol, all by myself. It was a very, very strange day. I remember everything of the war. Everything and the liberation. On the day of the liberation, there came a man in clothes that I did not know, and something on his head. That was the first Canadian soldier that I saw. This man puts his hands up in the air. He says, don't shoot, I'm a Dutchman. And he says, the Germans have just left. We chased off the Jerry's and freed a town that, for the last four years, lived under the dirty boot of the Nazis. War is strange. One day, you're burying your best friend. The next, you're setting hundreds of total strangers free. They're sure glad to uh, uh, see the last of the Germans. My mother cried out, that are the liberators, that are the liberators, we are free, we are free. Even flags came on the frontier of the houses that we have not seen in four and a half years. The 
It is unbelievable. I can hardly tell it. Uh, what's our feeling? The emotion again. You just don't believe how much the Dutch people appreciate what the Canadians have done for them. This girl's come along. I said, Mike, you can speak Dutch. She said, yeah. I said, this is a nice little girl. Tell her I love her. I love her good. <laughs> From Goes, we headed east towards the German border. We knew that if this war didn't end by Christmas, we'd have to bust into Germany and crush the enemy in its own backyard. But the winter of 44 was brutal. Cold as hell, Canadian cold. Everyone was pretty beat up. To make a final push into Deutschland, the Black Watch needed to recharge. The brass put us up in a small Dutch town of Koik, a few miles from the German border. The Jerry's on one side of the Maas River, us on the other. Bunking up with locals was a nice break from sleeping on the ground. When we were in uh, Koik, Jim and I were wound up in uh, this house with a, a, a real elderly couple. They slept in the basement while us lucky guys, uh, we slept in their bedrooms. Every time we woke up in the morning, our, our boots were polished, greased, and everything. She washed our shirts at night and hung them all dried out in the morning. We got up, our shirt was all washed and dry. <laughs> in the 10 months that I was in the front lines, that's the only time I was in a bed. It was Christmas. And for the first time in a long time, we almost felt normal. There was a cafe in the town of Kirk, and uh, there was a middle-aged lady, and she had two daughters. I always liked girls. <laughs> I'm not going to go into that, though. Jimmy, uh, you know, he was trying to tell her different things than I had to sort of interpret for him. Whatever he said, I, I wouldn't say. I always uh, thought of him, uh, the Dean Martin type. Dark, good looking. He used to say, how come you get all the girls? <laughs> he just met the girl. <laughs> and he's already told them I love you. <laughs> I was young then. My darling little family, I hope you're all fine and not getting into too much mischief. I bet you keep your mommy on the run all the time. Be good for daddy. And when I get home, we'll have lots of fun. My darling June, Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. With all the love in my heart, Dale. Mostly Koik was a pretty safe place, but the Nazi bastards never let us forget that the war was far from over. So we thought we'd remind them that we were here too. Me and Sandy were on this hill. We were working together that day. There's nothing out there. The Jerry's are out here somewhere. They're just hiding. Jesus, look at that Jerry. That son of a gun's watching us, Jim. He's aiming a dead on to Sandy. Put your head down. Killed him dead in a doornail. <sighs> I thanked him. I thanked him profusely. <laughs> Sorry, Davey. Sorry. We looked after each other. That's how we survived. Word came down from HQ to get ready to push into Germany. But first, our platoon was asked to scout ahead, see what we could find. 
Dale Sharp and I were assigned to see if we can get some information such as capture a prisoner or prisoners. And we got into a farmyard, which was actually on the German side. I see a body. We get closer and closer and he doesn't move, nothing. I go to put my hand on him. Don't. Could be booby trapped. Oh, they booby trapped their mother if they had a chance. And that's when we saw them. Two Germans. I said, Dale, we'll kill one and take the other one prisoner. All right, on three. Only one problem with that plan. One, two. Bang, I took a bullet in the right leg. I took the second one in the patella in my knee. Oh, I said, I said, I can't move, Dale. And I said, I'm done. Dale was able to drive off these two guys in the back. He picks me up with just like a bag of potatoes. Dale says, don't worry. He saved my life when he carried me across the valley. You're doing real good, Huck. You're doing real good. They're going to get you back to the doctor. My leg was hanging off. It fractured the bone. Hey, Dale. Thanks, buddy. Take care of the boys, huh? Bye, Hook. He saved my life. A beautiful man. For Hook, the war was over. He was lucky. At least he was going home. For the rest of the Black Watch, it was back into action. In February 1945, we crossed into Germany, bloody Deutschland. This wasn't about freeing anybody anymore. Now it's payback time. Retaliation? You're damn right, retaliation. They started the thing, and somebody's got to pay the bill. We observed the engineers going in and knocking the houses down with bulldozers and just blow them all to the devil. It, uh, it wasn't pretty, but it, it was necessary. It was necessary. They had to be taught a lesson. But in this Reichswald forest, the enemy had home field advantage. There were booby traps, landmines, and machine gun nests. Our job was to clear the way for our boys. They were having trouble with a rifle company advancing. And each time they show themselves at one end of the company, a jury laid on them with a machine gun. My job was to take out the gun and put a bullet into the bloody operator. I could tell he was going to take up the rifle company. The rifle company men started to move, and he let go a blast of about five or six rounds. I was fully loaded. I had a bead right above his right ear.
no mercy. You couldn't show it anymore. By the first week of April, we chased the Jerrys across the Rhine and pushed north back into Holland, near the town of Lauren. We set up camp near their main line, just outside of town. We could finally see the light at the end of the tunnel. We had those dirty Nazis right where we wanted them, against the ropes. But sometimes, it's just a question of being at the wrong place at the wrong time. The door is banged open and uh, in comes a couple of guys carrying, uh, turned out to be Dale Sharp. Sorry. I was hit back with shrapnel. Give me a hand here. Pressure. I was losing a lot of blood. The medic asked me to hold something and put back uh, his intestines. They were sort of out of the stomach. I was scared. I didn't know if uh, Dale Sharp was going to live or die. Brunner, Colonel needs you right now. Double time. That's when Mike got called away. My field medical card called it evisceration of the bowel. All I knew is that it wasn't good. Things weren't going well for Mike and Jimmy either. They were about to step straight into an ambush. There still was thousands of Germans and trapped in there. Hit me one of the chest. Move, 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 move! Everybody, start, uh, we all started running. Mike. And he fired again, hit me in the back of my head once. Piece out of my ear and a piece out of my skull. Mike, Jimmy, Mike, get me in the head. Just, just hit me. I'm gonna die. No, you'll be fine. I could taste blood coming out of my mouth and nose, and uh, I knew I was, that bullet went through my lungs. I'm gonna die. Here I we... know it. Hold on, hold on. Hey, hey! A jeep came along. Road. Hey, hey! It was a Red Cross jeep. Here's my friend. He's been shot in the chest and the head. Help. There's no point, son. He's gone. You're your medic. Do something. There's nothing I can do. And I said, God damn it, the, the guy's uh, shot. Uh, do something. If you know it's good for you, you'll put him on your Jeep. I think he'd have shot him for sure as hell. Okay. Right, Jimmy, they're coming. They're coming. Stay with us. And I just hope he would stay alive till we got to the MO. That's all you thought about. Those two days were the worst in my life. And I uh, apparently, uh, I was crying most of the night, but I don't remember a thing about it. I guess it just hit me. Uh, That was the first time I, I cried for anything. Three of us wounded, taken out of action. Only Mike and Sandy still standing. The Black Watch headed north to Groningen to mop up what was left of the Jerry's. By now, they were desperate, like a wild animal backed up in a corner, more dangerous than ever. And they pulled back someplace. So I got called in, find them for us. We want to know what, what, who, and how many, Sandy. Everything. There's none of our troops there. I'm alone in that side of the city. There was no activity over on the streets. Hands up or I'll shoot! All of a sudden, a German soldier appears. Mm. 
Nummer 1 kwam, nummer 2 kwam, nummer 3 kwam. En zo een heel rijtje uh, Duitsers die kwamen tevoorschijn. I figured about 20, just over maybe 20, 25 or so. Okay, lads, get those brain guns to the front. Let's go. And I'm cursing. I'm like, get that machine gun over there. Put that brain gun there. You guys go that way. And I'm hollering to imaginary troops. I want two columns, one on the left, one on the right. You guys, down the back. There's no one there. I'm alone in the middle of that street. Bring the carriers, bring the carriers. I was absolutely bluffing. Drop your weapons. And I thought, you're gonna get it right now. Well, let's go. And they put their weapons on the ground. Get against the wall. Hands up against the wall. Let's go, let's go. So is it gebeurd. Echt waar, echt waar. Voor ons was hij dus wel een held. Stond hij oog in oog met een Duitser. Die Duitsers die pikten alles in van ons. De noodzaak werd dat ze mensen uit Canada best deden om ons van die akelige Hitler. Ik dank ze nog steeds voor al wat ze gedaan hebben, hun leven geriskeerd. Dank jullie wel. Keep moving, let's go. I lined them up in three in the street. Let's go, move! <laughs> oh, yeah. Two days later, we drove every last stinking Jerry out of Groningen. For Sandy, it was time to celebrate, and he found just the right thing. It's a 33. Want some? But the party didn't last too long. I paid for it. I wound up in the 109 British General in Duffel in Belgium. Are you ready to eat yet? from the damn wine being poisoned. It had been booby-trapped with poison. Germans left it behind. And I was the only dummy that drank it. On May 5th, 1945, 19 days after Sandy drank the bad wine, Germany finally surrendered. And now, the lucky ones were going home. But not me. I was never going home again. I'm not ashamed of my tears. He was a good man. Good man. Many good men went, but Dale Sharp was, he was an exception. Oh, I'm going to cry. Yes, it's so tragic. I can't tell you any more about him. Yeah. Near his mustache. That's where this come from. I, I idolized. I idolized Dale. I can remember my mother being very sad, um, crying a lot. I had an empty feeling after I realized what had happened. I, 
I literally walked around, I think, for a few days, just kind of in a fog. I didn't know if I was coming or going, what was happening with me. I was so mixed up inside to think that I'd never see him again. I try to do good for my dad, because my dad's my hero. I have never been to Holland. It's one of the, the most important things in my life. I've always wanted to be here and see this, never thought I would. Once I get to touch his headstone, I'll probably feel a real strong connection. I love you, Dad. You've always been my hero. Sorry you died so young. I'm old enough to be your grandfather now. Rest in peace. Jack Kling is found by! The day after the war ended, I got the, the scare, the scare of my life. There was supposed to have been some Canadian soldiers being held by some German troops who uh, probably weren't aware that the war was over. I hope these guys know. Der Krieg ist vorbei! But I remember praying, and I don't know what language I prayed, but I prayed. And all I'm thinking is, I've been lucky. I went through my nine lives something times. Der Krieg ist vorbei! Now I'm going to get it. Dick Krieg! I started yelling. The war is over. Uh, Dick Krieg! It's burned by! And, you know, I'm really wave, waving that white flag. There was no response. Hello? You could see there was a campfire of sorts there, and that was it. Big sigh of relief. <laughs> folded up the flag, <laughs> trudged right back to the carriers. To their home city of Montreal, the Black Watch of Canada returned to receive a grand ticker tape welcome. When the war terminated, I was so happy. The famous Royal Highland Regiment sustained the greatest number of casualties of any Canadian unit on the Western Front. I was happy that I, I, I lived through it. It was a relief. The, the killing was over. The nurses come through and we all got a quart bottle of Younger's Ale. <laughs> When the war was over, I knew it was the end of the end of the line. I didn't jump up and, and I didn't, well, I couldn't get out of bed then. I was in the hospital thing. When I come home, my family never asked me what happened there and I never told them. I never did tell them. I had a knife with a big long blade on it, a switchblade, you know? And I took it out and threw it in the ground and buried it. I had brothers only seven, eight years old or ten. I didn't want them kids to find that, that knife. They didn't even know what a war was.
I'm just uh, happy that I come to tell somebody what, what was been in my insides all my life. Sandy. Hey, this old bugger. <laughs> the Black Watch is my life. Come here, you old bugger. <laughs> my body does not carry normal blood. It's Black Watch blood. Long time, Sandy. Wow. We're going to see how you doing, oh, Mike. Christ. Oh, wow. Oh. Good to see you. <laughs> Overall, that's the best thing that uh, that ever happened to me, uh, being assigned to the Black Watch. <laughs> Just to be alive. <laughs> oh, uh, Sandy. I'm very proud of being a, a, a Black Watch. God, it's good to see you, but <laughs> like you say, as long as you wake up. Yeah. We're on the right side of the grass, us <laughs> <those> old buggers. <laughs> I'm very proud. And here we are, we're still here, goddammit. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <Old buggers. laughs> I end every conversation, every phone call. I love you, Jim. I love you too, Sandy. But I sure as hell wish Dale and, oh, and Jimmy Bennett were here. I love that I love that guy. We kept each other alive and we did our job. We did our job, and I'm damn proud of it. Take that rifle, just like the one I used to use. Holy Yeah, you hit the target. Four out of five. 